I've often fantasized about being a lone survivor in a zombie apocalyptic world. What would it be like? How would I act? How would I survive? And what epically cool actions I'd take to blow the undead to pieces? In reality, I'd most likely hide in a corner of a safe house and cry. That wasn't an option here. It was kill or be killed. And in the famous words of a hermit streamer, winners win, losers lose. I started the new challenge with an air of seriousness. I was going to survive and thrive for these 100 days. And immediately, I almost died to what's known as a day zombie, a zombie that can run incredibly quickly. It didn't help that my FOV settings were skewed so it made the thing look like the flash, but I was faster and escaped, only to find the most underwhelming source of food sustenance since mankind arrived on this spherical rock, blueberries. Great for replenishing energy after an almost fatal attack. But this is a world full of zombies, I can't imagine I'm going to get much sympathy. Or shelter, I have nowhere to retreat to, which is why the priority is finding somewhere to set up camp, and ideally I'd like to do it today as it's the easiest and safest day of the challenge. I didn't find much, I considered setting up an swamp but then realized I didn't want to. Instead made some simple stone tools and waited on the water through the night. The easiest thing to do would be to set up the base in the middle of an ocean biome but that would be boring. You'd hardly see a zombie in this video and I don't want that. There were a few zombies that challenged me on open water but I'm like a swordfish when it comes to nautical speed. They were never going to catch me. And the difference in speed and mobility gave me the chance to watch the first and last normal moon of the series. Starting tomorrow the blood moon would reign supreme. The next day, the only thing on my mind was finding somewhere to settle down, and it had to be before the blood moon that night. That didn't give much time, so I settled on the top of a small mountainside. It's not as flat as I'd like, but I have a height advantage and the area has a lot of potential. Not to mention all of the surrounding terrain is dense forest, but the majority of this world seems like it's dense forest, so uh, I'm just going to have to deal with it. And as for a little house, the easiest and best thing to do is to carve one out of the mountain itself, like the dwarves of Middle-earth. Not as grand as the mountain kingdoms of Tolkien lore, but but it would have to suffice for now because I needed wood while no zombies were around. Zombies were definitely around and got in my way. Before I knew it, the blood moon was rising. I went back to my mountain kingdom, a small space I could hide, blocked off the entrance with a single block and waited. The sky turned dark and red, something you'd expect from the blood moon. Zombies spawned in, but it was hard to get an accurate estimation of their numbers from my vantage point. So I pushed them to the back of my mind, blocked off the entrance completely, got furnaces cooking items and got to work expanding the place I was going to be calling home for the foreseeable future. The morning of day 3 and there were a lot of zombies outside my base, and luckily for me, they have brains the size of fruit pastels, so I simply escaped through the back exit. By exit, I mean dug through the back wall and then refilled it with the same dirt blocks. I hadn't much of a chance yesterday to collect much wood, so I wanted to spend as much of the daylight as possible correcting that transgression, and I did until zombies found me. Another thing I have in my favour, apart from the freaky day zombie I came across on day 1, the typical zombie is as slow as my old internet connection, which, to put into perspective, only works worked half the time and was in fact incredibly lethargic in its delivery speeds. Unfortunately, I only had a limited amount of time outside before I had to hide from the blood moon. There's still plenty to do, a couple of the stacks I had collected went into the furnaces for charcoal, and the rest of the day was spent mining down into the innards of the earth. I wanted iron for armour. I'm naked and I don't like it. The zombie sounds coming from the surface were only mildly irritating and something I would get used to over the course of these 100 days. In fact, it became like ASMR background sounds. It put me to sleep most of the time. Continued mining day four found new types of ores I'd never come across. Tin ore, aluminium ore, sulphur. No clue how to use them, but I picked them up all the same. There was also a bit of iron involved. That filled me with pleasure. That lasted until a cave appeared, and that pleasure dissolved and reformed itself into unease. My first thoughts were zombies, and after gingerly lighting the place up, I stumbled across a mine shaft. And that was where I met my undead friends. I blocked off their route to me, and while I wanted to battle the way through and claim the place for a king and country, saner thoughts prevailed. I'd be back when I have armour. So I worked on heightening the staircase so I wouldn't constantly whack my head against the blocks above when using it. Day 5 and it was time to get crops on the go. Food other than zombie flesh is scarce and I don't want to eat rotten meat for the rest of my days. My chances of food poisoning are fairly high I'd say. Not to mention I also want animals and I can't breed them without a healthy source of food for them either. Despite keeping to myself there were a few zombies that managed to find me. Back at base I used the iron smelted to craft a bucket, a chest plate and leggings. The rest of the day I put into widening the staircase down into the mines, and with a stone pickaxe you can be sure I won't get done in a single night. I left the base early day 6, sneaking out the back as usual, except this time there are a lot of zombies waiting, I guess they know what I'm doing. A coincidence, or are they getting smarter? I tell you what they were, the burning spasm of soreness in my day. Killing them took up the majority of my daylight time, and my stone sword felt like a butter knife the amount of times I had to swing to kill a single zombie. Yesterday I put crops into the ground, today I wanted to start on a designated crop farm, and start was all I 
I could do with the little amount of time of sunlight I had left. In fact, I was only there for a couple of minutes before I had to flee to safety or shelter before the blood moon rose. Again, zombies were waiting for me outside of my base come day 7. Not as many as yesterday, but enough to be a hindrance. I changed offensive techniques, mixing samurai and viking techniques by swinging with a combination of sword and axe attacks. The axe was the heavy hitter, the sword for finishing them off. After zombies were taken care of, I went back to work flattening the terrain for the future crop farm. I didn't get much done, but it was something. Being the committed and reliable YouTuber I am, I forgot to film the first few minutes of the next day. Rather than go outside to face a horde of zombies, I thought I'd work on an underground passage that would allow me access to the surface away from zombies. Far enough that the ones back at the base would despawn and I could run back to work in peace. A Saul Goodman approach and I'm certainly not beneath carrying it out. You join me placing stair blocks at the mine staircase on day 9 for speedy staircase travel. Most of the day had already passed because again I uh, may have accidentally sort of forgot to press record. 100% not my fault, you've got to believe me. What I had done that day, not much. I used the despawn path to despawn the zombies and it kind of worked, well actually it did work, I don't know why I'm saying it kind of work it did work and then run back to continue clearing the area for the crop farm while working on the staircase somehow zombies spawned from below and snuck up on me these spawn mechanics i'm already finding out are scary because uh, it seems that nowhere is safe in this game fortunately i had a gate at the top of my staircase to hide behind always be prepared the final part of the day was getting more furnaces on the go for smelting multiple stacks of cobblestone i like using stone bricks again did the old despawn the zombies away trick on day 10 it worked like a charm the only zombies remaining were the ones that had picked up items in order to defy the game mechanics and prevent themselves from despawning. The brain dead entities, some of them can be fairly smart, like I said it's not a coincidence, and again I got back to work flattening the terrain, intermittently interrupted by each of the occasional item holding zombie. Don't fret, they were dispatched with ease. Two or three more days and I think I'll actually be able to start on the crop farm itself. Down in the mines I witnessed for myself the scary spawn mechanics at work, when a zombie materialised out of thin air in front of me. If I hadn't have witnessed it for myself I wouldn't have believed it, but now I know for certain, no safe area is truly safe and that's terrifying for a mortal and I'm no mortal. Day 11 again prepping the terrain for the crop farm and while yes there was a zombie here and there they weren't enough of a disturbance to kill my momentum. I had made the jump to iron tools and here I am showcasing one of those new iron tools, a pick. Nothing extraordinary but it's a bit of progression to make note of. Again my undead compatriots came to check in on me and showcasing my second upgrade, a tin longsword, made light work of them. What can I say, size matters. I spent the night mining, zombies spawned out of nowhere again despite me having placed torches all over the shop. I guess it's preordained for me to live in constant paranoia. Day 13, with my long sword, I felt safe tackling zombies that came my way. I've made an astute observation, something you probably wouldn't have noticed on camera, but some of the zombies are marginally faster than others. Maybe their paranoia is setting in harder and quicker than I thought, because I'm certain of this theory. Work still needed to continue at the crop farm, and I finished clear enough of the area that I was happy to start working on the farm itself. That didn't involve much at this point in time, simply marking out where the water trenches were going to be placed and then into the mines come night when I struck gold, or should I say diamonds, until I decide what to do with them, I'm going to hold on to them. The next day I dug out all of the remaining water trenches for the crop farm and then removed as many of the stone blocks that needed to be dirt as I could, because as any of my budding horticultural friends know, you can't plant crops in stone. That's gardening 101 for you. Oh, and look how I'm spending my night, mining, getting all the ores. Day 15, I'd not used the despawn path for a few days because there hadn't been as many zombies recently, so it was inevitable one of these days a lot would be waiting for me. Cue today. I had to round them up like a sheepdog and take them out swing by swing. I've already said it, but I'm going to reiterate. The great sword I now wielded like the mountain was so much better than the piddly little sword I've been making do with before. Because I got through the zombies quicker than I would have otherwise, and the universal laws of time management meant that I'd freed up the rest of my day to work on the crop farm, and again down into the mine at night. I realise a lot of these days are carbon copies of one another, but that's the nature of the early game beast in this challenge. At the moment, I'm pushing a boulder, and it's slowly moving. But over time, as it gathers momentum, it's going to be a different story. The final part of the night, I waited at the end of the despawn path so I could see when it was daylight, and this was my first proper view of what a blood moon looked like. It's basically just a moon, but red, like blood. And because I'd waited at the end of the despawn path, there were no zombies in sight when I appeared at the crop farm the next morning, and that meant a full day's work. I filled in any sections with dirt where I'd removed stone blocks, filled what trenches I hadn't with water, and placed planks in said water for where torches were going to be positioned. Unfortunately, 
Unfortunately, the version of Minecraft this mod pack runs doesn't allow for torch placement on trap doors, which means, for the sugar cane at least, I'm going to lose a few spaces of farmable land, but it is what it is. Progress didn't stop when it got dark, no -ho. Down in the mines, surprise surprise, I found another 8 diamonds, and again, like with the last lot, I'm hesitant to do anything with them just yet. I know their value. Day 17. Today I lit the farm with torches. If this were vanilla, I'd spread the torches out more, but I know when it comes to blood moons, the spawning rate for zombies goes through the roof, and I need to make certain I don't give them an inch of spawnable space to appear, hence the increase in torch placement frequency. The crops I'd planted back on day 5 could now be harvested. Really, I should have harvested and replanted much before now, but I always just wait in to get the crop farm ready because I'm a traditionalist like that. Don't jump the gun, it's not finished, there's still a lot of work to do. I need to clear a 5 block space out from the outer torches of the farm, so I'd have space between the edges of my farm and walls I plan to put around the perimeter, which is another job that needs doing. And then I'll probably, as in I will, clear a small perimeter on the other side of the walls. Towards the end of my time outside I was sequestered by a large group of zombies that thought they could take me off guard. How wrong they were. At my current power level it was going to take more than that to take juice down. I was, however, definitely convinced they're incrementally quicker than they used to be, like I said a few days ago. The next day I postponed finishing the crop farm. I needed wood and it was a priority. I deliberately hung back at base before running through my despawn passageway to the trees near its exit. Despite my best efforts, zombies still appeared and they came through in larger numbers than I'd expected. Yes, I killed them all, but it hindered progress. Still, by the end of the day I'd gotten enough wood to last me for a bit. The solution for the future? Create my own tree farm in the safety of my base. Day 19, it was finally happening. Walls were going up around the crop farm. This would be a game changer. If zombies couldn't get to me, productivity was going to climb dramatically. However, the walls themselves weren't going to be enough if zombies could climb onto the blocks on the other side of the walls and then over the top, which is why I said I'm going to clear a small space out from around the edges of the walls so this can't happen. The final parts of the day were spent building a staircase from my house to the crop farm. Climbing up and down the mountain is awkwardly slow, plus this will join the two sections of my base into one as a whole rather than having two separate areas. Even with zombie distractions, the staircase got finished the next day, and the final stages of zombie proofing were to remove the blocks from the outside of the walls to prevent zombies climbing over and getting to me. Like I mentioned just moments ago, they're obsessed. It's like hundreds of creepy stalkers. This must be how Amaranth feels. Okay, I've identified an obvious weak point of the staircase where zombies can drop down from the terrain, which also happens to be the roof of my house, down onto my staircase and inevitably to me. Wall blocks being as OP as they are were the easy fix to this problem. I spent the rest of the daylight removing all of the blocks near to the outside of my walls. It's crazy I have to do this. Why I can't live in peace, I don't know. The zombies have the entire world to roam. All I am asking for is a small piece of the land I can live harmoniously for the rest of my days. But no, it was too much to ask. And in defiance, rather than hide away in my house come the blood moon, I stayed out for the first time to show I wasn't scared. It had nothing to do with having walls securely in place preventing zombies from being able to get to me. In fact, a couple of zombies spawned inside my base before all of the torches were placed, so that just shows that that wasn't the case. That's not the reason I stayed out. Although, I think I spoke too soon, because uh, when I went to light up my stairs, zombies had managed to get inside my walls and sneak up on me, and a fight ensued for my life. Using quick-brained actions, I blocked them off with dirt, but like the sharks they were, the scent of blood drove them into a frenzy. They weren't going anywhere. It didn't take long for me to figure out how they'd gotten inside. There was a tree on the other side of the walls with vines zombies were using to climb up over the walls and into my territory. There was nothing I could do about it now. The blood moon made it too dangerous to attempt to fix, but tomorrow, I'd fight back. The next day, I finished off the zombies inside the walls and removed the vines the zombies had been climbing to get into the area. In hindsight, I hadn't removed all of the vines, so they'd grow down again and become a problem. I don't know if I show it, but I do end up actually removing this tree completely to ensure that never happens. I don't think I've mentioned, but there's flax seeds in this mod pack, and when planted, grow into tall flowers, and those tall flowers produce string when harvested, and having not seen a single spider in this world, that is a really, really useful plant. The next project, collect and breed animals, but I didn't have the space, so I was expanding the base with walls. The original idea was to build a barn for them to live, but the hard truth is that this is survival of the fittest out here. I'm one man versus a world of undead obsessive stalkers simple pens will be fine. During the blood moon, the plan was to work on replacing all of the non-farmable land with stone bricks to tidy the place up. Unfortunately, I didn't account for the new walls being a security threat, because uh, zombies could climb onto those walls and then along them and then get in over my original walls and into my main base. That's not good. Day 23. There were too many zombies in the area for me to work without wasting all of my day killing them. Quick tangent. Although you and I know they want to peel the flesh from my bones and devour my very essence, from another perspective, they kind of look like supported by 
high standards cheering for me the way they're jumping up and down trying to get in over the walls. It was going to be quicker to get rid of the zombies with the despawn path, so that's what I did. However, I didn't realise how many of them were holding items, preventing them from despawning, so that was another issue. Like with the crop farm, I removed all of the blocks that zombies would be able to climb onto on the outer parts of the walls of the new area, then began my work tidying the new place up. I filled in waterclogged areas with dirt blocks, removed tall grass, sugarcane, trees, anything that was in the way. Then, when I could see the day was going to be getting dark soon, I got to work lighting the place up. There were a couple of zombies that made it inside before I fully lit the place, but that was it. And I could relax through the night, not having to worry about my personal safety. The following day, I got to work bringing in animals from outside the walls. I got cows with wheat, then went looking for sheep. Found one, at first was worried I'd lost my way, but managed to reorient myself and get back on track. Unfortunately, a wolf killed my sheep. I I killed the wolf but by then it was too late and too late in the day to go find another sheep so you know, bad day a quarter of the way through and i was an animal whisperer today sheep cows pigs they were all on destiny's agenda as usual there were a few zombies about but their stupidity got them held up in the little pockets of swamp water dotted about the terrain it's amazing how much of a challenge they pose to our undead friends hence the reason i decided not to build on an ocean at the start of the video it's basically a genuine life hack to easily survive in this mod pack seeing as i couldn't go out onto the wilderness to collect more animals come night time I spent the night organising the animals I had into their respective pens. Day 26 and I was heading to my house to grab chicken eggs I'd intermittently picked up on my travels and was surprised to find zombies exiting my house, my place of solace and rest, a place of utmost importance to me and it had been desecrated by their indecorous presence. The only course of action was swift and unwaverable justice. Rather than hunt for chickens I was hoping I'd get a couple from the eggs and uh, Lady Luck was on my side because I got several. The rest of the day I spent removing dirt blocks inside the walls that I'd like to replace with stone brick blocks when I got the chance. Yes, I still hadn't finished this task. The next day was a simple day. I spent it mining for both ores and collecting cobblestone for turning into stone and stone bricks. I found some diamonds. It wasn't my purpose to do that, but I thought I'd mention it because so many people get fixated on these little gems of wealth, as if it's the only reason you'd ever want to go underground. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a big part of going underground, but it's not my only reason, right? On my descent into the deep earth, there was an unusual biome I've never seen before. I couldn't collect the blue dirt and the blue mushrooms were known as glow shrooms. After some exploration I found a mineshaft. I didn't really want to stay for long, I'm not a fan of mineshaft's early game in vanilla hardcore, let alone a zombie mod pack, where there's dozens of hostile mobs no more than 50 blocks from you in any direction. Like I said, I did a bit of exploration, found nothing amazing, but there was this weird robot looking zombie that snuck up on me from nowhere. I lift a tail of the tail, and the tail is that I no longer wanted to be down there. I went back down into my mines to convert one of the lava patches I found into obsidian, and then stayed to mine enough for both an enchanting table and a nether portal. Back at home, I made the enchanting table before I forgot. It's the first thing I've spent diamonds on, and then decided it was time to give my home a second level. Expanding outwards would have been an issue and expensive on resources at this point in time, however, living in a mountain, I can carve out all the space I'd like, so I felt it better to go down. I'm going to be putting an enchanting setup on the lower floor, and that was all I could think of for the time being. I finished removing all of the blocks for the second floor the next day. With nothing else planned for the day, took the opportunity to head outside the walls and harvest trees. Mostly, I was left alone. The issue was that I didn't have much time before the moon and the undead with it rose. But when it did come, the time was spent filling in all of the dirt blocks I'd removed at the crop farm with stone bricks. Ignoring the flesh eating bystanders, I thought the stone bricks were a great addition. Looked a lot tidier. Again, I was tree harvesting for day 31, except this time I got out of the base early. One, I need the wood. Two, I was gathering saplings to start my own tree farm. Three, by removing trees around the base will give me length and visibility. The trees disrupt my line of vision, making it difficult to see what's around. That includes being able to see my own base when I'm outside the walls. I like to keep it in sight where possible so I know where to run if it gets too late in the day. During the night, I simply harvested the crops. You might not be able to see very well because of the crimson red colour of the moon that stains everything it touches, but when I right click on crops, it harvests them and replants a seed in its place automatically. I wish that was a part of vanilla Minecraft. The next day, I took some of the wheat from last night's harvest over to the cows and sheep. Somehow, there were slimes getting into my base, and they were quick compared to the zombies. I wasn't sure how they were getting into the base. They were either spawning inside the base, which they shouldn't be, or getting over the walls somewhere. There were so many zombies that had held items, it was ridiculous. None of them would despawn, so I killed them all with the hope that the items would despawn themselves after a few minutes once left on the ground. I thought about picking them up myself, but they're junk. After all of this, I got in a bit of time to chop trees, but not much. At the moment, I have a lot of spruce, oak, and birch saplings, but I want to diversify soon and get other saplings added to my portfolio. This mod pack has a lot of other trees to offer. 
An observation I'd made whilst playing is that new zombies don't spawn in on a blood moon after half the night had passed, so I kept an eye on the moon until it was over halfway through the sky. I'd made a tin halberd in the hopes I could take out the zombies quicker. It's a heavy hitter, but only targets one enemy at a time, so I switched back to my tin greatsword and things went really smoothly. Also, I witnessed the slime get into my base from over the walls, so now I know they can get over the top. I suppose jumping is part of their repertoire. I managed to get maple tree saplings the next day, a tree I'd had my eye on. Not unlike this other red leaf tree, red oak trees. However, it didn't drop any saplings, so that made me sad. Day 34. I went further afield and took down some cherry blossom trees, which are unfortunately not like in Minecraft 1.20 where the wood is pink. The wood in this mod pack is just regular oak, but they look nice when grown, so I might keep them up for aesthetic reasons rather than practical purposes. A little further on and there were some dark oak trees. I tried to get as many saplings as possible, but I was mindful of where the sun was in the sky. I left before the blood moon rose coming away with saplings from both trees. Originally, I'd intended to start during the day but like with so many ventures I thought fuck it and so I got to work during the night on what would be my tree farm. It's not going to be anything special, just a platform I can plant trees onto. I worked on the tree farm all of the next day. It was slow progress because I needed to ensure the dirt blocks were in the position I wanted, plus get torches in place before the blood moon rose, before I cement my demise by inviting zombies to spawn inside my base. At that point, I deserved death. I'd ran out of birch wood on day 36, everyone's favourite wood they never moan about me using in the comments, and I needed it for the flooring pattern I had going on at the tree farm. It's about as decorative as you're going to get from me so don't expect much more. With enough birch to keep me going, work resumed at the platform. Most of the platform was completed so I went to grab saplings from my house and a zombie snuck up on me again. Zombies had gotten in. I worked on the tree farm for all of day 37. but it didn't get completed until the following day. Here it is, my own prime real estate for wood. Now I'll be able to harvest all of the trees I want from the comfort of my own base. Yes, the occasional zombie gets inside, but it's still a heck of a lot safer than outside the walls. I wanted a break from trees on day 39, so I spent it harvesting crops. The farm is at the point where all available crop space is now being utilised. It's exciting because from the next harvest onwards, I'm never going to have to eat rotten flesh again. Food poisoning will be a thing of the past. The second half of the night was dedicated to killing zombies. Too many of them have held items. Same story as always. Day 40 was spent mining. Not for all blocks, but for stone. I'm in desperate need of it. Maybe desperate is a stretch. I could use any block for what I have in mind to do next, but I think stone bricks are going to be best suited. The next project I have in mind is renovating the mountain, my home, into something that looks more adequate for what we're doing in this world. Surviving. I surfaced from the mines day 41 to put several stacks of cobblestone into the furnaces, before returning back down into the mines to collect more. With the tens of stacks of cobblestone I have smelting in the furnaces, plus another 10 stacks of cobblestone I have in one of my chests, plus another 10 stacks I'm sure to mine throughout the day, I think 30 stacks of stone bricks will be enough to turn my small mountain house into a small zombie defying fortress. I'd befriended a cow during my days of hiding, but as good friends as we were, he wouldn't get out of my way, and after a few taps on the shoulder didn't work, the swift hand of tough love needed to prevail, and as much as it pained me, I needed to focus on the work at hand. I busied myself around my little mountain, setting the dimensions out for my small fortress. After slowly working around, I was pleasantly surprised to see that each floor would probably see an expansion. Yes, I know it's a sandbox game, and in theory I could make the floors any size I want, but that's not how the real world works, and in theory isn't reality. Again, there was a zombie inside my house, he'd climbed the ladder up from the despawn path. In fact, there were three of them. Maybe that's how they're getting inside my house, the sneaky peats. But it still left me confused. The amount of torches I had placed everywhere inside my base, including the despawn path, should be spawn proof. I spent the rest of the night harvesting crops. The sweet, sweet crops that would change my hunger situation forever. The only issue was slimes were still getting in over the walls. I think I'm going to have to do something about them soon. An efficiency 5 netherite pick would sure seem good right about now. And maybe some sort of netherite weapon too, because the zombies were annoying. Come night, zombies were in inside the base too. Bloody things are somehow getting inside the walls, and I haven't figured out how. It's since I got the tree farm, so I feel like it's something to do with that. However, they're not dropping down from above because there's walls surrounding the farm, so they'd be trapped up there if they spawned up there. My only other thought is that maybe the farm is making the space down here slightly darker in places, dark enough that even torches can't prevent sun spawns. It's a working theory. To make me feel better, I shoved a couple of stacks of potatoes into cook. Baked potatoes are my ticket to a better life. Day 44, I worked on the outside of my house for as much of the daylight as I 
could until the message notifying me of an incoming blood moon, surprise surprise, appeared. During the night, I towered up at my crop farm to get a good view of the land and watched. I wanted to get to the bottom of the anomalous zombie spawning. Are they spawning inside of my base, or are the few of them managed to get in over the walls? The tricky bastards must have known I was watching, because the walls held up completely fine and not a single zombie crossed into my territory. Coincidence? There is no such thing. Day 45, I swear there's more zombies appearing with each passing night. They're like multiplying cells, and unfortunately, as much as I gave the hint I wanted to be left alone whilst working on the outside of my house, my message wasn't heeded. I saw less zombies during the blood moon than during the daytime from inside the safety of my tree farm. I was getting critically low on wood. I spent the entire of day 46 harvesting the remaining trees at the farm, which also happened to me most of the trees. Even iron isn't cutting it anymore, or should I say chopping it. Get it? Chopping it? As in, like an axe? Anyway, I needed an upgrade to diamond, but it's a scarce resource, and though I have diamonds to make an axe, I'm still unwilling to part with them. Not a bad haul from a day's harvest, it's a lot better than I've been able to get until now. I didn't replant all of the saplings, I only planted rubber saplings and maple saplings. Two trees in this mod pack not found in vanilla, and I don't have many of them so I'm going to be focusing on bringing their numbers up so I can have unlimited access to rubber wood and maple wood. Also the rubber wood has a chance to drop rubber. Don't know what it's for but it's going to be for something and I didn't know at the time that the logs themselves uh, are actually just converted straight into rubber so the rest of the day I focused on building up the wall. My thinking is that if I can't see the zombies and they can't see me so hopefully I don't get as many of them at the base although I'm fairly certain they can hear me. First stage I focused on only the wall blocks with torches on top because I want to reuse use the torches so I need to get as close to the wall to grab them as I could and doing that during the day rather than a blood moon is much less dangerous because zombies on the other side of the wall are going to be less numerous and so less likely to hit me. I found that a couple of zombies got into the base and I think they can somehow get in over the wall on this side. Hopefully with the additional height of the walls that's not going to happen any longer. The same hopefully will be true of slimes but we'll see. I forgot to record most of day 48 but it was just me finishing the walls and working on the outside of my house some more. As for now I'm up here at the tree farm chopping down the rubber and maple trees to see if I can get more saplings. And I doubled both the number of saplings planted for each of the trees. Let's continue this trend. Day 49, I was shaping my house from the outside. It wasn't going to be long until I could start adding the stone bricks and actually have the fortress I always dreamt of. I might have even been able to make a start that day if it wasn't for the hordes of zombies that kept coming for me. Tomorrow, I'd use the despawn pathway. My own blunder here, I'd left the entrance to my house open and so zombies had gotten inside. I wanted to leave them outside but the blood moon was rising so I had to block off the entrance, climb up over my house and jump the wall to the back entrance. From there I could kill them peacefully. Lesson learned. Don't ever leave the front door open. Which is something I never do in real life. I'm actually insanely paranoid about locking doors. I've watched enough serial killer documentaries to know that not locking your door in this day and age is a risk. Also, always check the back seat of your car. Halfway through when I was putting bottom slabs onto the roof of my house. I presumed the mobs wouldn't be able to spawn on bottom slabs like in vanilla Minecraft. This job should have got finished that day but <laughs> I'm sure you didn't see this coming. There were so many zombies that it didn't happen. And because it was raining the zombie villagers didn't despawn and these were the faster guys. I don't think I've actually shown you them prior to today. They only spawn during blood moons and burn up in sunlight and are clearly getting progressively faster as the days go on. Although if this is your first time seeing them this is the first speed you've seen them at but they were a lot slower when the first blood moons came around. Would I be able to cure them? I genuinely have no idea. I haven't seen a spider yet so making potions of weakness might be kind of tricky. Oh and I left my house wide open again so zombies had gotten inside. Shame I'm not as paranoid in, uh, in game as I am in real life right? I think the mystery is solved. I actually saw a couple of zombies also spawn in front of me by the sugarcane farm so I guess the base has a few potential spawnable or not even potential just a few spawnable blocks zombies can appear and it was on the dirt of my crop farm so there's not really much I can do about that. That is majorly annoying. Plus slimes were still getting into my base or maybe like the zombies they were simply spawning. It's not a massive deal because they don't spawn in massive numbers and it, I guess it means I have access to slime. But it just also means I've got to be in a state of constant alertness. Kind of like a rabbit. I mostly finished the roof of the fortress on day 51. I got all the slabs placed. I then tried to go around the walls but ran out of time and as much as I wanted to stay out during the blood moon getting complacent like that was gonna get me killed. I worked on carving out the insides of the small mountain to expand my house interior to fit the dimensions I'd carved out of the outside of my house these last few days. You'll notice I'm using a diamond pick now because I thought why the fuck not I've got the diamonds use them. You might have noticed but I've got this habit of getting good materials and then not wanting to use them because well it's gonna use them up but that's a toxic way of viewing things because I never use them up then and what's the point in having them days 52 and 53 were spent working on the house
My diamond pick broke and surprisingly it didn't bother me. I focused on what I'd accomplished using it. Until I find a better source of fuel, logs were needed for converting into charcoal. I'm burning through a lot of the stuff because of all the stone and potatoes I've cooked. I managed to put 10 stacks of logs in for cooking. 640 charcoal coming my way. Chew, chew. I keep forgetting to breed the animals. I don't need them for food per se, although that will be a nice bonus. It's more for the leather and wool the cows and sheep will offer. The pigs and chickens, yeah, okay, their primary use will be food, but for the other two, I actually have a, a use for them. I was fed up of zombie spawns, so on day 55, I thought I'd do something about it. Put bottom slabs on the ground around the outside of my base to prevent any spawns. I'd seen success with the roof of my house. Now it's time to do the same with the rest of the surrounding world. Obvious problem, I'd have to do an absolutely humongous amount of land because the zombies in this mod pack can pathfind from a long way away, but preventing spawns and then slowly preventing more spawns over time as I add more and more slabs is going to pay dividends long term. That's what I'm telling myself. A56. The chests in my base are disorganised and messy, and in the wise words of Marie Kondo, you must be organised in Minecraft as well as real life if you want to see success. This version of Minecraft won't allow the same type of chest placed in front of one another, so I had to alternate the chest placements for each of the categories, which is why they're of different colours. I dedicated a couple of the categories to dirt and cobblestone respectively, simply because I had so many of each. The following morning, I went back to spawn proof in the land around my base with bottom slabs. When it came to the hillside, however, my tactics changed. Like the rolling tiger I am, I felt it better to build the hillside up with dirt until it reached a certain level. Then, I bottom slabbed the fumongous out of it. Did someone say February 14th? Not me, silly. Don't let this display of animal breeding trick you into thinking there is an atmosphere of love down on the animal farm. It's strictly carnal. Up in my house, it was strictly professional. I spent my time organising my disarray of chests into my new storage system, which also happens to be just chests. But these have labels, and therefore are more formidable. I spent all of day 59 at the tree farm. The main focus now, both maple trees and red oak trees. That's right, your boy got some red oak saplings and was driven with purpose to get in more. There were other trees to harvest too, but they're not even worth mentioning. Check it out, day 59. I know what you're thinking, how is this possible? Let your eyes not deceive you. I do indeed have some more maple and red oak saplings planted than I had previously. I had work outside the base to do, building up the terrain with dirt. It's a lot of effort, but like with most of the things I do, there will be a benefit in the long run. Not the long run as in this video, but I mean way further down the line. How can I be so sure? I just know. And that also happens to me my excuse for doing anything that seems pointless right now, because you know, one day it's gonna pay off. Not today, but one day. During the night, I finished moving all of the items into my storage system, I am officially ready to receive blocks. Outside the base again, I had a horde of zombies on my tail. Things looked fairly dangerous, some might go as far as say sketchy, but these last 60 days of isolated post-zombie apocalypse breakout have toughened my fighting spirit. It took up a lot of the daylight, so I didn't get as much dirt as I'd like, but yeah, I got rid of them. And that's the name of the game out here. I'm still forgetting to breed the animals as much as I should, their numbers should really be about three times what they are. Crops on the other hand, never forget about them. The main focus was wheat because that's the crop I'm running the shortest on because of the cows and the sheep. Greedy bastards. I often ask myself what's outside the walls of my cage. I say cage because effectively that's what my base is and I'm nothing more than a trapped bird wanting to spread his wings. So today I took flight and went exploring the world in which I'm a part of. Up until now, I've been surviving, but more recently, I feel the scales, although still mostly in one direction, are very slightly starting to tip from surviving to thriving. The Blood Moon was obviously my biggest worry being outside the base, but being the hyper-intellectual that I am, I knew I could live through them if I was smart. In terms of what I came across whilst out on the open road, nothing much. A lot of forests and swampland. I did manage to scavenge sweet berries I'd be able to use as a natural defence against zombies as time goes on, so that's nice. When the Blood Moon rose, I was ready, on a body of water in a boat. I was practically untouched. My superior agility and speed were an insurmountable walls that zombies couldn't climb. The next day, I came to the realisation that I was passing by a lot of free food. It's not as if these animals meant anything to me, they're strangers in a foreign land, and if my Viking ancestors taught me anything, you take what you find. Including this crab, my reward? A crab shell fragment. Found a desert temple too, although not longer after finding it a blood moon rose, so back onto the open water I went, however I made certain to move far enough away from the desert temple that it was outside of render distance, that way when I went there 
then the next day I know it was zombie free. This time I situated myself on a small island rather than the open water and punched zombies away that swam over to me for fun. I turned it into a bit of a game, kind of like whack-a-mole except these moles wanted to tear me limb from limb. Man, when your life is on the line, everything becomes so much more fun. Moving towards the desert temple the next day, I can't say I wasn't apprehensive, but fortune favours the bold, and so I went in prepped for a surprise ambush. There was none, and so I looted the contents free of charge. TNT, gunpowder, bones, saddles, golden horse armour, golden apple, and an orange rune that I have no idea what to do with. I was a happy boy. My looting hadn't finished there, being the desert leaf that I am, I floated about the sandy wasteland picking up anything of use, cacti, sand blocks, and aloe vera for sunburn. By the time I got to the acacia trees, I was cursed with a full inventory, so the acacia logs from the trees are left, but I did make room for acacia saplings, seeing as these would be the ticket to unlimited access to acacia wood back at the tree farm. And as I said, my inventory was full, so that marked the end of my journey. I'd head home. Like a couple of days ago, I spent the majority of the blood moon on the open water in complete safety. However, towards the end of the night, seeing as I knew zombies didn't spawn in the second stage of the night, I decided to head to shore, get a head start on the next day's travel. A smart idea. However, uh, I didn't account for there being zombies in the trees where they'd spawned during the first part of the night, but hadn't path found towards me because I'd been too far away on the water, but not quite far enough away that they hadn't despawned, meaning they were lying in wait for me. It wasn't too bad, I could have had the agility of a snail at this point in the game and still got around these guys, but it wasn't a nice surprise. Day 64 consisted of marathon training. I ran and ran, and with a couple of thousand blocks of travel lying in between myself and my base, I wasn't certain I'd make it back by nightfall, but maybe I should never have doubted my little blocky legs because by the time the blood moon rose, I was back home. Was that it for exploration? Absolutely not. I left the base the next day and headed in a different direction. I didn't get particularly far this first day because I kept getting distracted with killing animals for food, but I did manage to get to open water by the time the blood moon rose, so you can tell how the night went safely. Day 66 and so many sheep died. I say this with a heavy heart, but many a woolly community was desecrated. This took up basically most of the day. The only new thing was this snowy biome and there was nothing of interest there. There were no bodies of water around so I had to hide underground for the night and smelted stacks of meat to uh, keep me busy. Day 67, I decided to turn back. I was a couple of thousand blocks away from the base and I wasn't finding anything I hadn't already. Again, when the blood moon came, I hid underground and cooked food. I forgot to film the first part of the next day, slightly awkward, but all I did was run home. Here's a look at my inventory after my second expedition. Not much, mostly food. I travelled a long way for food, but I suppose this must be how people feel when collecting dominoes rather than getting it delivered straight to your house. As time goes on, it seems I have more and more items that need smelting. Add in another set of furnaces to the arrangement and we had a setup of 20 on the go. It's not automated, but I'd still be able to get through a lot of stacks of items without much trouble. The leather from the cows outside the base that had sacrificed their lives, couple with paper from my sugarcane farm, I could now bake books, and from there, 10 bookshelves. I'm going to need a bit more before I can get good enchants from the enchanting table, but it's a, it's a nice start. Day 69, and we all know what this day is about trees. I was creating a second tree farm, or maybe you could argue it's simply an extension of the first tree farm. This one is going to be for trees that need four saplings worth of space for the trees to grow. There are only two trees that fall into this category, dark oak trees and the giant spruce tree variants, both of which are going to be great for acquiring large quantities of logs. During the day, the project didn't bother me. Through the night, however, it was disconcerting seeing the massive undead lying in wait for a human happy meal to fall into the clutches. Day 70, I ran out of bitchwood, and one of the blocks I'm using to build the new tree farm platform. Yes, I'm still slowly building up the amount of red oak and maple saplings, and by the end of the night, I had a few more. Won't be long until this entire space is filled with these saplings. The next day, we were back down to brass tacks. Work went hard at the tree farm, placing birch wood, getting the dirt blocks placed, planting dark oak and spruce saplings, and filling in all the gaps with spruce wood to make a lovely yet unoriginal mural. Or as much as I could because I ran out of spruce wood. I thought about chopping some of the large spruces that had grown, but then I don't like harvesting trees during the night. The crimson shading just makes it kind of hard to see, and my delicate eyes have a hard time, especially when you have sunlight bellowing through your window onto your computer screen in real life. It's, it's never good. You know what job the crimson colour does suit, however? Day 72, I made the rest of the bookshelves needed for high level enchants. I wouldn't blame you if you thought I was going to start enchanting, however, you'd be wrong. First, there was still the matter of an unfinished tree farm platform. Once that was done, then I went back to the enchanting table and enchanted as many books as I could. There were some unusual enchants I'd never heard of. Lucky Strike, 
spikes, which maybe is this mod pack's version of thorns, and pool speed. The sound of dozens of zombies could be heard on the morning of day 73, so the despawn path needed to be used, though when I ran back to base on the surface of the world, there were still zombies around my base. If you don't have elf vision, you might have had a hard time seeing them on camera, but they were there, and so I had to turn back to run further away, before being able to turn back and return to base again, and this time it worked. It's been a while, but I still hadn't finished building up the portion of terrain I'd started with dirt blocks to make it less traversable for zombies, which as stated earlier in this video, is best for long term. Again, I'm not tree harvesting for wood, but for particular saplings, including now acacia saplings. With an enchanting table set up, it's my only source of enchantments. I plan to use it a lot, something I won't be able to do without the levels to do so, so I worked on creating a basic mob grinder that would allow me to get XP. When I say basic, I really do mean that with emphasis. It's a pit with trapdoors around that zombies are going to walk over and fall into. And how am I going to ensure the zombies make their way into the pit? By using the tastiest bit of bait I've come across during my 74 days of playing, myself. And what do you know? It worked like a charm. In fact, the pit was filled to breaking point. The next morning, eager to get downstairs inside my base where I'd built an access point to the bottom of the pit, I allegedly killed the zombies at my own pace as they screamed in infernal agony and anguish as I severed their anima from their deadless vessels, and as a reward a shit ton more XP than expected. And it went to use to enchant books until my supply of lapis ran dry. With no way of enchanting further, I went back down to work building up the terrain. Got it to the point where I want it to be, now I've got the rest of the terrain to deal with, but not for the rest of these 100 days, I imagine it to be a recurring project over time. After seeing such good results the night prior, just like the juicy little worm I was, I dangled myself as bait to lure the fish. Day 76, a historic day, I thought it time to go to the nether. I built a portal, put a little wall around it with gates to block nether mobs leaking through the portal into my base. First impressions, the particles looked like some sort of nether storm, plus the little ghosts coming off from the soul sand gave it quite an eerie feeling. There was also these little black blocks I found to be ash, and this ash could be turned into coal, a direct source of fossil fuels. Isn't the environment lucky. I used up the remaining durability of my diamond shovel collecting the stuff. Can you believe it? There were zombies in the nether. That wasn't rhetorical, I generally thought they wouldn't be here. Is there no place I can get away from them? Day 77, I thought I'd venture deeper into the nether to search for a fortress. My first trip had been relatively peaceful, so I didn't expect much trouble to come my way. How wrong I was to be. The first zombie I came across was noticeably faster than usual. Not enough to be a threat, but enough to give me chest hair. It's a hunch I've had for a while, and I really feel that this is solid confirmation. And that begs the question, if they were gonna get a continual speed buff as the series continues, what's the upper limit. There was a rare sight, a weird ghost mob I've never seen before and will probably never see again because of the zombies taking over the spawn rate. I got some sort of cursed bead for it. Looking back, maybe that cursed bead was the reason for so many zombies appearing because the further I went into the nether, the more zombies that I came across. I killed many of them, but both my offensive weapons and armour were losing durability and more zombies kept appearing from the nooks and crannies of the underworld. So I noped the fuck out of that place. What was the point in searching for a fortress when the likely outcome would be death? The next day didn't consist of much. I organised what needed to be cooked and then went searching for some sand to replace the sand I picked up at the desert, but for some reason I'd smelted into glass at an earlier stage. By that point, the day was coming to an end, so I went mining for the night. You might be wondering why I was still using a stone pick when I had access to iron and diamond, and it's because I didn't want to waste my better materials, especially as they didn't have mending, so the durability wasn't infinite, or infinitely repairable at least, and I felt I'd be wasting them on ploughing through mostly stone blocks. I got the mining bug for the next few days, wanted to restock on walls. Actually, that wasn't it. I just got the mining bug. I just wanted the mine. I was in the mood for it, and that's that's the reason. I finished up mining on day 83. Here's the resources I collected. Most notably, as Luke might suggest, 19 diamonds, and I already feel averse to spending them. After that, it was simply a case of putting the ores into smelt. What is my base missing? A lot of things, but evidently, watchtowers. What fortress or survival base is complete without them? The thing about surviving this world, you've got to be careful, but you've also got to be bold and for someone who not only wants to survive, but thrive, and tip the scale in my favour, expanding the territory is a must. So I worked on where the base of the watchtowers would be, using bottom slabs so zombies wouldn't spawn. During the night, I did routine chores, breed the animals and harvest the crops. The next day, I mapped out the dimensions of where I wanted the watchtowers to sit around the base. I wanted more than one, several to be exact, all of which would eventually be connected via large walls. That's a long way off, but the plan is there. During the night, I put the trap to use, so I'd be able to work outside the base with as little zombie 
zombies as possible with the following day. And it worked for the most part. I continued to build the outlines of the platforms the watchtowers would sit on. It's looking like there are going to be six in total, and I don't even think they'd all get done and connected in a 200 days video if I continued this challenge. Maybe they would. I just know everything I try to do takes longer than intended. I don't know if I'm getting more complacent, confident, or a mixture of the two, but I'm finding that I'm beginning to stay out later when a blood moon rises than I used to. In the early days, I'd be back in base before it rose. Now, zombies are starting to spawn as I'm still outside the base, and I don't feel scared, a problem that needs nipping in the bud. And no, I don't need a near-death experience to teach me that lesson, or a death experience. I just need to be careful. I planned for part of the next day to be composed of tree harvesting outside the base, and I'd need a good axe for that. Unexpectedly, I spent diamonds on an axe, and equipped with the enchantments, unbreaking 3 and efficiency 4. As far as mending goes, I'm confident you can't get it at an enchanting table. I need to get a villager to sell them, or I'm going to need to get lucky with loot from a chest. But for now, this axe is more than enough, and arguably the best tool I've used throughout this video. I didn't need the wood, however, with the watchtower platforms where they are, my territory will be growing again, and I need to clear the land to make it habitable. If this land is going to become part of my base, it needs to look the part, as well as be the part. As for my main reason for tree harvesting during the night when I said I didn't need the wood, with my new axe I had an itch that needed scratching when it came to chopping down our carbon emission absorbing friends. Outside the base removing trees again for day 88. There were a few more zombies than I'd expected, that seems to be an ongoing thing. Rather than kill them, I thought I'd just keep my distance and evade them. It turned tree harvesting from a mundane laborious activity and into an interesting challenge. It's finally happened. I've outgrown my armour. It's at breaking point for all of the pieces. It's pathetic and distasteful for a hardcore challenge. Diamond armour? Not yet. I'm still cautious about spending them. However, there is a middle ground. With access to enchanting, why not make a new set of iron armour and enchant it? Then, when I'm diamond rich, so to speak, I can transition over to diamond armour, because for now, I want the diamonds for tools. This morning, I'd left the base quickly without replanting any of the maple and red oak saplings I'd gained the previous nights, because I wanted to make as much use of the daylight time outside the walls as possible. Now the sun had disappeared, it was time to replant. I'd basically got to the point of a maximum capacity tree farm with the two trees. Infinite access to both maple and red oak logs is mine. There's a lot to do outside the walls of my base, but realistically, me, you, and your family knows I'm not going to be able to get that work done by the end of this video. Postponing those activities doesn't weigh heavily on my heart. My furnace is being short on fuel does. I have half a stack left for each of them, which is enough to smelt four stacks of items slash blocks each, but it won't take long until that's gone. In hindsight, going to the nether to grab ash might have been the better option, but I was still wary after my last visit. On the plus, I'd get more spruce saplings for further spruce trees, and my new axe made light work of those big daddy spruces. Then shoved 10 stacks of logs into cook, putting half a stack into each of the 20 furnaces. In prep for when I enchant, made a diamond pickaxe, diamond shovel, and a diamond hoe, and a load of tin grain swords. Day 90. I used the despawn path so I could work in relative peace around the base. There were zombies holding items, but that's now to be expected. In fact, it would be weird if they weren't around. Spent the majority of the day filling in the bottom slab floor in where the watchtowers were going to sit. I'd used myself as bait the night before, I wanted the XP for enchanting and killing zombies in the pit pushed me from levels 27 to 35. Enchanted my pick, which I got efficiency 4 and breaking 3 and fortune 2. My shovel, I got efficiency 3 and breaking 3. My hoe, uh, turned out couldn't be enchanted at the enchanting table. So I slapped a fortune 2 book onto it at the anvil, for no other reason that I wanted to. And so whenever it's in my hotbar, anyone watching the video will see that I've got an enchanted hoe and will think, damn this guy is a professional, despite it being a completely useless enchantment on a hoe. Yes, I have diamond tools that could be doing this instead, but I'm trying to burn through the rest of the durability of my iron tools to make use of what I have left. Always get your money's worth. I ran out of time before the blood moon rose before the shovel broke. Wanting to enchant, I spent the night luring zombies to the trap and it worked well. Day 92, I enchanted an iron helmet with protection 3, and an iron chest plate with protection 3, and unbreaking 3. Then, because I've been using up a lot of my diamonds, I was wondering to myself if a mining session with a diamond pick without mending is a good idea. In my eyes, it was only a good idea if I could make back the diamonds I'd used on crafting the pickaxe itself. I put it to the test. Three individual diamonds was needed to break even. Anything above that and I'd be walking away with a net profit. And so in my mind, would be a good idea that I went mining. And not long after starting, I came across seven diamonds, so that's a net profit of four, plus all of the iron and shit I'm gonna find. Yeah, it was a good idea. After this, I got it into my head to use up the entirety of my pick's durability to see what I come away with. As far as I was concerned, I could make a further two diamond pickaxes with the diamonds I'd already found, and still have one left over, and I think this was probably the turning point for my resistance to using diamonds dissipating. Of all the things to come across, an underground villager house is not one of them. An archaeologist lived here. Maybe one day I'll see if I can put him to use, but for now I'll leave him be.
day 100. I didn't think my mining session was going to last as long as it did, but I transcended into the flow state, and now we're here. These were the most noteworthy things I'd collected. All of the ores, 24 diamonds, a lot of lapis, and iron. Name tags, pumpkin seeds, melon seeds, beetroot seeds, a couple of enchanted books. Yeah, I'd say that mining stint had been worth it. It was then just a case of transporting resources from the chests in the mines, either to storage or to furnaces for smelting, and whatever didn't fit into the to smelt chest besides the furnaces. Made a new enchanted diamond pick to replace the ode. This one only had him breaking three, so not as good as the one I broke, so I made another and enchanted it. This time I got efficiency four, I'm breaking three, and fortune three, so slightly better than my last pick. And yes, before anyone says, I realise now I could have just used a grindstone and re rolled the enchants. As for the rest of the day, I didn't do much, just relaxed and pondered what we'd accomplished. Until night came. Then I got on with harvesting the crops and replanting specifically wheat, as it's still the crop I have the least of when I take into consideration I'm going to be continuously depleting the reserves from animal breeding. And that was that. The sun is rising for day 101. That's it. I survived 100 days in a Minecraft zombie apocalypse. If you enjoyed the video and want to see future content, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.